This is episode two about turning variables into numbers. You should start this one if you're sure you really understand the basics and uh, ready to build on it with this episode. First of all, let's start out with a recap of what the last episode was all about. Turning variables into numbers has three general steps. First of all, you assign numbers to your variables. Then, based on those numbers, you solve the problem. And lastly, you look for the match between your answer choices and the answer that you found. Now we're going to add two more wrinkles to turning variables into numbers. First of all, if answer choices include variables, which we haven't seen so far, so far we've only seen answer choices that had numbers, then you're going to turn those variables into numbers as well. Secondly, if more than one answer choice works, then you're going to need to go back, change your numbers, and go through the process again until you only have one answer choice that continues to work. Let's look at all this in more detail using some examples. So here we have an example of the first new principle, which is that sometimes you have to turn variables in the answer choices into numbers as well. But we're still going to go through the same three basic steps, so let's do that. Let's start by reading the problem, though. If a, b, and c are integers greater than 1, with a times b equaling 15 and b times c equaling 33, which of the following must be true? So the first step is to choose numbers that work. And remember, you have to meet all the restrictions in the problem, so choose carefully. Now, you might naturally say, OK, if a times b is 15, maybe we'll try 3 for a and 5 for b. But one thing that makes this one tricky is that since this b is 5, this b also has to be 5. And yet there's no integer for c that would work. 5 times nothing is going to give you 33, at least not given that c is an integer. So sometimes you have to back up and try again. So this 3 and 5 combination must be wrong. So let's start over. Instead of 3 times 5, let's try 5 times 3. That'll fix our problem. We still have 5 times 3 is 15, so that's good. And yet now that b is 3, we're going to be able to make this statement true. 3 times what is 33? 3 times 11. So we've fit all the restrictions in the problem, and we're ready to solve the question. The question is, which of the following must be true? So actually, we kind of have to look at the answer choices in order to solve the problem. And that's where we get to our new guideline, which is that sometimes variables have to be turned into numbers. For instance, to know whether b is greater than a is greater than c is true, got to put the numbers in. So let's do that. What was b? b was 3. So 3 is greater than a. That was 5 is greater than c, which was 11. Not so much. 3 is not greater than either of those. So we'll get rid of that one. b. a is greater than c is greater than b. a is 5 is greater than c, which is 11. We can actually quit here because 5 is not greater than 11. c. c is greater than a. That's 11, which is greater than a, which is 5. And is that greater than b, which is 3? Yes, we found our answer, so we can quit now. So the principle here is that sometimes you have to take your answer choices and also make them numerical if they're not already numerical. Let's look at one more example of that idea. If q equals r times s, which of the following must be equal to q times s? So yet again, we need to pick some numbers. And here's a